this and then yeah, probably you don't you don't know me. So let me briefly introduce myself to you guys. Um, I've been married about 27 years and then the last April uh, we had I had 27 yeah anniversary. So my kids already they are grown up and they are in graduate school and my older one she finished the graduate school and then she's working and they send basket to celebrate yeah, to celebrate our anniversary. So it was really nice, really thankful. And <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I studied uh, at Biola University and I got a degree there. And I studied about yeah, second generation Korean Americans. And then they had a lot of opportunity to uh, uh, went on there. Uh, to go on a mission trips, but we don't know what is a good and how the mission trip impact on their life about especially uh, missionary attitude, right? So I studied it about that one. So it's really interesting. Yeah, the, the second generations and the influenced by the first generation, they influenced by there is a subculture in America, and, but. They are influenced by the, the American cultures, but yeah, I can see that they are blended and uh, they have kind of a, a heart that uh, from their parent generation, but sometimes due to the, the cultural trend of America, so they are kind of bind, yeah, bind with that and then they are kind of struggling with it. So anyway, so and that's my academic background and personally I got involved in missions and uh, international missions, cross-cultural missions and then uh, last week usually I lead the mission team to Mexico before uh, we go to Southeast Asia and but still I'm taking the mission team to Mexico, right? And Last weekend, then I took them to the uh, Tijuana. So we already told you, uh, pick up the pick up a church, and so been yeah since last year. So uh, once a month we go down and try to help the yeah church and for the especially for yeah Sunday school ministry, uh, children's ministry, and on the top of that one. Um, I yeah, travel one more time once a month, and there is kind of a, how I saw, it's not seminary school, but still um, the school is still trying to re educate the pastors because sometimes the pastors they don't have a yeah, theological background, and then the missionary uh, I be work with and for the short mission, and then he he started the, the ministry and then he invited me to teach the classes and then yeah and once a month I went down Monday through Wednesday I stayed there and then uh, teach the classes so uh, I'm currently I teaching the, the homo new, biblical homonewics and also a Bible study how to study Bible and then in another class, they asked me to teach another one, and there is a Sunday school teachers on Wednesday in the morning. So, I uh, yeah, yeah, yesterday I started teaching another class and so about how to study Bible. It's not a homo news, but it's too much for them. And then, but when I whenever I got there and uh, uh, taught the classes, I'm I'm. I feel really thankful and uh, I know I have to drive down two, three hours and then uh, stay there. It's not comfortable because it's not my house, the traditional house there. And then I got to stay there and then, yeah, sometimes two, three hours just, so, yeah, teaching and, but uh, whenever I try to teach and about the uh, pastors or students today, understand it little by little and then 
Yeah, it really, it, yeah, that is just kind of a really give me joy and uh, some meaningful time with them. So that is why uh, that is my ministry. And last three years ago, and I uh, made a non-profit organization. So that is that. Uh, so we try to uh, support students who have kind of uh, le poten yeah, leadership potentials and then but they don't have you know, support from parents because of that they are poor and we try to kind of select a student from junior high school to college and try to support so sometimes tuition and um, the living cost so after they graduate college or secondary school whatever we don't yeah we, yeah, we don't just to support for the secondary students, we yeah, support any students. So maybe after they graduate from the school and they can serve their community and their church. That's the uh, uh, I'm doing. It's called the love to hope. So our love gives them hope and they move forward, right? And that is the kind of your ministry that I've been doing. But uh, I got ordained from the Korean churches, but I I not doing the ministry. Yeah. So instead of doing ministry at church, I doing the yeah, I I I've been engaging with the cross cultural missions. Yeah, that's my brief introduction about me. And if you have any questions, and yeah, just let me know. And maybe if you have any life issues, and if you have any yeah, face issues, and if you have any kind of yeah, want uh, opportunity to see the other people, and like yeah, if you travel down to Mexico, and just let me know, and I will to take you guys right and. Usually we're going down to Mexico in the sun uh, fourth week of the each month. Yeah, fourth week of the month. So uh, if we don't have any special thing uh, things in the in Mexico church and then uh, usually we set up and then who is available we are going down. That's a kind of voluntary uh, the trip. Yes. Um, so I'm going to teach the, the, what is the, the um, this class is yeah, planning and leading, what is the, leading worship. So uh, nowadays, uh, my question is, uh, what is the proper type, the archetype of the worship? So I know Christianity is formed in the first century. It's a, yeah, and after Jesus Christ died, and what happened? After he ascended, what happened? Christianity is start, started from that point. But still, uh, the Christian had Christianity is kind of a continue a yeah, continue Asian or kind of like connected to the Judaism. It's not a Judaism, but Judaism background and then uh, what's the difference? Judaism, Judaism is still uh, waiting for the Messiah, but uh, Christianity so believe that uh, Jesus Christ Messiah and then Jesus Christ the one, the one who uh, prophesied and but he in the Old Testament, but he's fulfilled in New Testament. Yeah, and the time that's why following Jesus Christ and form the one. Christian. So if you read and Acts chapter 11 and then people just talk about the name of the Christian who followed Jesus Christ, right? So uh, you, um, I have a question about uh, why is the proper type of worship? Because uh, I can see a lot of things at churches, right? I don't know whether you guys attended church or not, but still a lot of issues. And it's a real worship for Christians. It is a real worship that really God wants us to do like this. 
Anyway, so maybe the question is really good for me and then Claudia, when I teach the class and then when I preparing the class and I try to look for the and my answers and what is the biblical you know, version. And maybe we can try to search for the answer. And so uh, this course, uh, as the title says, and then this is uh, planning and leading the worship. So uh, this class is like uh, trying to understand what the Christian worship is like and uh, what is the economic issues now and what is the worship and what is the biblical about biblical worship and what is the theological foundations and then uh, we can kind of have yeah, a lot of questions to answer so uh, try to understand what is the uh, biblical worship and then how can we may yeah, have a biblical worship but uh, even though there is a biblical yeah biblical worship the proper economy the archetype of the, the worship but still when you look back the uh, uh, the uh, changing the times and cultures and then a lot of things are yeah, changed right 10 years ago is very really different from nowadays and think about uh, about 10 years ago before I come to America and then we don't have the internet and when I was in Korea like uh, 1990s and then uh, I'm not a computer generation, uh, computer generation so at that time usually it's a typewriter I don't know whether you guys have seen it but yeah when I write the paper we have to use a typewriter or you have to do handwrite right and that yeah generation but Nowadays, my kids, they at least they've seen the typewriter, but still they don't know how to use a typewriter, right? And then, like, and as cultures change and technology, technology developed, and then what? Society change. So people thinking is yeah, people, 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 people think is different, and then it means that main the philosophy of society is changing along with the changes and then rock worship style as involved with the cultural changes and what about middle ages and what about reformation times and what about nowadays right so still if you go to different yeah, churches they have a different worship style practice on Sunday. They have yeah, they have their own worship style. Even though it's the same denomination, but their worship style may be different. So regardless of the, the worship styles on uh, we try to tackle to understand the heart of worship based on the Bible and cultural context. Maybe style worship may be different but why is our heart of worship? How can we prepare and how can we yeah, serve in worship, right? For worship. That is so. And so, um, but uh, uh, we can think about what's our main uh, elements in the worship and then or how can we prepare like a uh, 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 Nowadays, the music is really important, and then I'm going to spend some time on the music, and especially how they prepare, and then, so, so they really need a lot of, yeah, uh, process to planning and executing the worship, yeah, uh, planning and leading the worship, yeah, so, um, we will have, uh, uh, see the ones are essential uh, elements and how can we deal with it and then uh, we can yeah, give us some practical aspect of the each topics and then how we want to tackle it uh, what about this one what about this one but when i why i prepare the the yeah, lecture note and then probably nowadays worship style is really different from my wish style yeah the wish style that i uh, I've been grew up with. So
So it will really different. But still, uh, the book, the text will be chosen. And one book is really give some yeah, idea about what is the element and how we prepare a whole yeah, there's suggestion. Another book is more it's like a lot of uh, information about practical stuff. So um, so we're gonna kind of consider all aspects what we need in worship and then uh, try to deal with in this class. Maybe sometimes there is a lot of limitation to talk about, but still we're gonna talk about one by one. So uh, that is a basic uh, a class uh, description. And here is uh, some objectives and student outcomes of what I expect. And the student to really understand the basic theological foundations and historical element to plan and lead corporate worship service in the local church. I mean the corporate mean that it's not an individual worship and then when you go to church and we yeah with the others we worship God, right? That's a corporate. Yeah, that's what we call the corporate worship and then and we're gonna talk about yeah that one. So I hope that and uh, you guys deep understanding of worship through this class and especially uh, get to the biblical foundation of worship and then look back kind of evaluate how your church how you are doing yeah, having the worship right. And another one is that student will be equipped with the knowledge and skills in planning biblical ground and cultural connected to worship service. So uh, we gotta know the what is the heart of worship. We need to know that and then what? The worship style has been changed by cultures. So how can we kind of yeah, uh, prepare the worship not losing, not lose what? The heart of worship. So that's the uh, that's the yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, that's the um, outcome that I expect. And then another one is that students will learn other services and such as planning tools and outline resources that may help to plan and facilitate the corporate worships, right? So how can you use the music and how can you learn from uh, uh, other resources? So I hope that uh, you guys, I know you, if you are worship leaders and you are involved in worship team and there's a lot of things to do that, but usually as a pastor, I watch the preparing the worship. Usually they are practicing the how do uh, the on Sunday. Sometimes it's, it's like a performing, but sometimes, yeah, it's, it, it, it seems like a performing. But sometimes uh, I can see the kind of yeah, they really make uh, a worship for God. But sometimes it's a part of a big activities or a kind of event. Depends on, but uh, maybe there's a lot of resources available, especially relevant to the what? Culture. So I hope that you guys find the information. And here is yeah, the book record. There's a two kind of books. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, the worship architect is a very uh, basic uh, theological foundations and then they, they go over the basic elements like uh, you know, how we start and then how we preach, how we pray, and what about how we end like this, and then and what about music, like what about prayer, right? And but the, the other one is uh, art of worship, and then it really uh, emphasize on music. It's really uh, if you are not a musician and it's not easy, but just uh, if you are interested in music, maybe it's really helpful because nowadays it's really heavily uh, worship is what uh, heavily relies on yeah you know, music. I can see music and preaching. So 
Yeah, I thought I chose that one. And maybe there is uh, some other uh, books, and then uh, still Chai wrote the special service worship architect, and then you know the and Christmas and Easter, so like uh, there is maybe evangelism, and then there is a special services there, and then how can we prepare? So another one is yeah, worshiping art and equipping you and your ministry team to lead others in worship. So try to as a team how can yeah prepare worship, how can we do worship. That is a recommend yeah, recommending reading. Here is a class schedule, maybe depends on, so maybe there is some changes, but uh, I didn't put the, the history of worship, so uh, I try to kind of deal with the topic at the end of this class, but uh, when I see the read and yeah, read and uh, too much information, so maybe I'm going to separate, I'm going to separate uh, the historical worship, so maybe it helps you how world worship is kind of changes and evolved un until now. And then there is a lot of books out there, and then maybe you can just uh, type online, and then there's a fully books is there. So maybe you can get a glimpse of not the details of what you want, but yeah, you can see. And then uh, I try to see the uh, what's the archetype of worship. Uh, I look for that one, but like uh, when you go to church and there is kind of form is there, and then and someone is coming out greeting and then worshiping, playing the band and rock, and and announcement and the pastor coming out and preach, and there is some reflection time depends on church, and sometimes rock, uh, and then it's offering time and pray and that's it that's the, our church is a worship style but and everybody every church is may be different right they have a different worship style and then uh, i don't know why it happens so usually it happens a lot so i hope that it's working yeah I don't know what happened. So because of that one, I changed my computer. So I think it's a my computer problem, but maybe kind of a communication problem between my computer and screen, so TV, yeah. Yeah, there is a topic that I'm gonna insert, yeah, history of worship, and then maybe third week I can put there. So uh, formation of worship and then uh, foundation of worship and history. I'm going to put the history and then we can maybe adjust. Any questions about class? What we what, what we are expecting? And yeah, if you need any questions, just let me know. Right? And what do you think? When you think about worship, when you go to you know, when you go to church on Sunday or other day, and what is worship? What are you thinking about? So, what element do you guys have in your worship? And maybe I already told you, right? Band start, and maybe some churches are a little bit uh, still do your traditional church, traditional. Yeah, worship, yeah, worship star and then like John McAdoo Church and Grace Community Church in LA, Los Angeles. And once I cannot go, yeah, I couldn't go to church because of uh, uh, COVID infection. And I stay home and I watch. And then I can see that it's already traditional. A little bit, the orchestra is playing, and there's a lot of ideas kind of which I got from the, the books, our books. I can see that. And so maybe uh, think about why is the worship? Why is the worship? 
I don't know. Something is, yeah. My solution. How do you define the worship? Uh, here is, yeah, um, I got the, from book and other book and the definition is that uh, activity of glorifying God in his presence with the, uh, our voices and heart. What do you think? Is it true? Then there is activities of glorifying God. Why is it glorifying God? How do you activities maybe offering, maybe praising, singing songs, right? And what about the glorifying God? How do you define the glorifying God? That's a common word in Christians. I don't know. What are they thinking about when they say when they say the praise, glorifying God? What do you think? What do you think? Glorifying God is a kind of an abstract, but sometimes, sometimes I know maybe um, maybe you won the what's the gold medal in Olympics and what you have glory. You have glory, right? And in front of people, you are kind of you know, acknowledged and give you honor, respect because of your achievement, right? It's the easiest way to glorify is what God is there. God's known is God's name is known. God's name is known because of you, because of you. That's glorifying. What do you mean that God's name is known in good way, not the bad way? If you said, oh, I'm a Christian, and, but you said really bad things, and then, oh, he's a Christian, but what? That's why. I don't, I don't want to go to church if he is a Christian like that. It's not a glorifying God. It's a, what? Blaspheme the God's name. Blaspheme God's name. Defame God's name. And glorifying God is that because of you, God's, knowing, God's name is known, that people kind of honor the God, people really wow. And then kind of a respect and honor and kind of a praise because of them. That's a glorifying God. So, uh, our global life is glorifying, yeah, to glorify God in the, in the daily life, you gotta live as a Christian. So when people are to see you there and uh, see you guys, and then God's, God is kind of known to them. That's a Christian life. And then, wow, wow, he's a Christian, maybe God's a blessing. That's a glorifying God. Right? So, worship is activity with glorifying God in His presence. Meaning that God is everywhere. God is not like our Father. We call our Father, but He is the Spirit. And usually we get together and to worship, and then God is there. We mean that. Because God is everywhere, God is with his people. In his presence. Even though maybe you're hiding from God and the rock, God is there, but still, maybe it's not an official place. Like at church on Sunday, we believe that God is there. Right? And with our voices and heart. With our voices and heart. Just think about when you go to church and then, and how you glorify God with your voice. Maybe praises and hymns and some songs. What about what God has done? That's a really important thing. 
brought back his son. Always. And just think about and how God has kept you from the old dangers, how God has been blessing you, and then try to think about who God is for you. That's why you praise Him. We praise Him with the voice. And not just the voice, but your heart. Without, yeah, when you go to church, people are really singing nice and play very well, but sometimes just playing the music, sometimes just singing. Sometimes come to church because because of the social yeah because of the, their social relationship, right? Without heart, what I'm saying that you couldn't do everything without heart, but with heart, really fear God and love God and respect God and give thanks God. That's a real heart. That's a worship. So here it is, and we included these uh, service of worship uh, activities such as well, praising Him, thanking God for the song and, and prayer, and reading and preaching the Word of God, and celebrating the sacrament. Sometimes remember what God has done. And sacrament, we usually we do, uh, what is it, the Lord, yeah, the Lord's Supper. And the last night, Jesus Christ and had a dinner with his yeah, disciples, and then he bread, yeah, well, bread, he take the bread together, and this is my body, and remember, and then this is yeah, he took a cup, and then wine, and then this is my blood, and symbolize, and then remember, right? That one is kind of yeah. and through that one we uh, know the suppers and the what we remember what. Jesus Christ has done for us. The last night, and he had last dinner with his disciples, and the one, we remember what he said. And then Jesus Christ is going to die for the sinners and resurrected to give life back to God, right? Forgive our sins. And that's so. And that's basically his ministry. So we cannot go, so because of the sin, God is perfect, righteous, and love. God is righteous and love, but just think about righteousness, there is blameless, right? But humans are kind of, you know, break the covenant relationship with God, and they away from God, and they keep it all away. And Jesus, God planned to take their heart back to uh, him, back to him and reconcile the relationship. That's, a, that's why he chose Abraham and the goes and goes and goes and, and about 2,000 years two thousand years later, he sent Jesus Christ. Right? He sent Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, and people that Jesus Christ, when they sing and they take the walk, animals and they take offerings to God and to forgive their sins. But Jesus Christ is willing to become what? Sacrifices for sins and to be to forgive our sins. That's why Jesus Christ died and become a sacrifice on the cross and he died. And but he resurrected and then made way to reconcile with God. How big, that's a big story of the Bible. That's the, the core story of the Bible. And Jesus Christ said that and he keep teaching who God is and the God's kingdom. And then he ascended after he said, he's not coming back. That's a Christian's basic belief. Think about it and that is a kind of a we, we are even going to struggle, lot, we are struggle with a lot of life issues, but think about how God forgives our mistakes, sins and mistakes, and accept it as, as it is, as I am, and then what? Invite me, invite us to leave his people. Even though we fail every day. That's why 
how our sins forgiven by in the name of uh, through the uh, through the uh, through Jesus Christ and the world still we can stand before God because of Jesus Christ. Right? And that's why that's the basic things that our belief and then we can give thanks. Yeah, we can remember whole things in Lord's Supper. Right? Lord's Supper. So uh, every church has a different uh, uh, every church is different yeah, to to the, the sacrament like a Lord's Supper and then uh, my daughter's church in Phoenix they do every Sunday. And my church once a month uh, they do once a month and then when I was in Korea and uh, our church uh, kind of a special occasion like Thanksgiving and then uh, suffering or like, yeah uh, twice or three times in a year yeah that's it so it depends on the church it depends on the their theology but still remember why we are doing it. so all these yeah yeah uh, elements are in the worship right in the worship so yeah, this element just seems to be a standard activity in most churches, but many differences also characterize the Church of the Jesus Christ, right? It means that it will be a practice in different ways. Okay, so uh, that is a kind of basic yeah, definition of worship. I hope that uh, maybe there is a different definition, but remember that I mean, Sunday we get up together and we do all the activities try to glory, glorify God in His presence at church or the world. With our voices and with our heart. Right? With our heart. So opening is a part of our heart. Opening is a part of our heart. And let's continue. let's talk about the yeah, uh, uh, the differences of a worship style. And if you go to the big event like evangelism event, maybe a retreat event, and every once a year, and then you can see how they worship. Have you been? Uh, I've been with my youth group kids and. I went to a uh, big conference. I went over there and then the which is really a uh, singing song, it's very nice and so lots of people come standing and dancing and clapping and raise a hand. It's a little bit different, right? That's just a special occasion. Right? Special occasion. Sometimes people are crying and crying. Right? Because I think so we believe that the Holy Spirit moves people's heart. Some people, because of the music, they're dancing and they do like this, but sometimes when the, the Spirit moves their heart and then they kind of walk. They are broken and they down before God humbly and that's a standing before God. That is a yeah, what are your know, worship style? And well, what about the denomination and give some kind of different style of worship? If you go to well, Pres Presbyterian Church, uh, depends on really traditional Presbyterian Church, and then um, they don't clapping, they really sing a song. So they use a hymn, not the contemporary worship song. And my daughter. And his whole friend is kind of a uh, friend's dad is a pastor like her, and then he's doing the kind of church ministry. And once she visited her you know, daddy's church, and then daddy, right? So they don't have any instrument at church. Just yeah, why so? Uh, over is there, pipe over is there. It's really kind of a remember so like. Uh, uh, reformation time around that time, right? 
nothing. They look like being, they use the wow, uh, him, oh. And when you see the kind of worship, and then they have order, and then when you go and sometimes, and uh, doxology, and praising God, and they can read the Bible. I still remember because I grew up a little bit, yeah, like that. And then when yeah, a pastor coming and choir, was a choir coming in, and then everybody stand up, and then kind of there's a, a music, pianos, or organs going, and then the chorus is the sixth part of singing. And then everybody sing together to give glory to God, Him, right? And then someone coming out and pray for worship, and then praise, and then rise up, and preacher coming, yeah, pastor coming out and give them preach, and then offering is there. Before the what? Before the preaching, usually the choir sing a song and give them glory to God. Come, the song is related to the what? That day is a sermon, but still, uh, give them glory to God and then after sermon depends on the church nowadays and when I grew up with and then opening mass is going around if you're ready for the opening you can give the offering and then after opening prayer and the walk and big short announcements that depends on church some church in the beginning or later so my church is doing the kind of a later and then and one song, another hymn is there related to today's sermon. And then a uh, pastor coming out and benediction, give them benediction. And choir after that, and then yeah, after benediction, and the choir is kind of rough. And then worship is done, and then uh, pastor is coming out, and then it's greet to everybody. That is the uh, worship style. I grew up with yeah, uh, what's it, the Presbyterian Church. But yeah, when I when I was uh, when I was young, and there is no guitar band, and we just use like uh, uh, what's it, uh, on Sunday worship. We usually use like, the piano or organ. That's it. We don't use a guitar. Uh, because I grew up, and then at the time I didn't play, not many clays cannot play, I couldn't play, uh, play that one. And but uh, if you go to Pentecostal church, and then why? Well, it depends on there's a time and speaking, tongue prayer for prayer, and then it's really and they clapping, and band is coming up playing and loudly. and Depends on the denominations, it depends on the church. What about the age group? If you are getting older, if you are older, like I'm getting older, and then nowadays is to think about a lot of this kind of worship style and then see what are they doing. Still, young, age, yeah, young people and drumming and yeah, electric guitars and keyboards, and then they try to show up to the Wow, skills. Yesterday I was in Tijuana and then I talked to the translator who is who is who she's working uh, got helping me to teach, right? And then she was uh, she's a lawyer. And then she didn't know that when she was young, like a team and then they wanna show the skills, play loud and whatever and they wanna show off. Still in the church, people are doing that, like that. And then she she didn't know, but she's over 30, and I know nowadays like this. And But um, when I go to church, and sometimes I'm really bothered. I'm really bothered. Because music is too loud. I cannot focus on the worship of God. My heart is kind of uh, irritated. Sometimes, they tried to make it beautiful and then how try to harmonize, but it didn't work well. Don't do harmonize. Sometimes kind of really, there is no kind of harmony. And sometimes 
alto is dominate the rock. The soprano and sometimes tenor is dominated, so they are leading singers, and then I don't like it. And it's so awkward the singing. Instead of they using the harmonizing, why don't you keep just trying to listen to others' voice and sing together? It's better. That's my uh, personal opinion. And then, but they want to do something like that, right? And maybe people with the older generation church is they're very quiet, but they don't clap in a lot, but they do like this, like this, right? And if you go to the so youth group service and college service, is very different. What about cultural trend? And long time ago, I don't know whether you guys, we're going to talk about maybe Gregorian China, right? At that time, and that time is what? If you between the nodes and then there's an empty space there, and then what? So Satan gonna go in and destroy, and then they don't have any space. So da 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 da. It's like a hymn song like this. They use the style of the music. But nowadays, and when you go to, I go to out to Mexico, right? But some areas are not really educated very well and they are not exposed to the music education and then but uh, they learned how to play the uh, uh, instrument keyboard and then they never learn about how to sing you know they cannot hit the right notes so once I was really bothered because they sing the heart of worship and then so it's totally different. We don't know. Why is the song like that? And every time the song is different. The who plays a keyboard and leading the singer, they don't know the hymn or notes. She, don't, she doesn't know. So I was really bothered in them once. And they sing like one hour. And then I was kind of really bothered. My heart is really irritated. It's not worship. And then I opened my eyes and to see how they are singing. Well, it was really amazing and I repented. And I opened my eyes. People really close their eyes and raise on like this. And they are praising God. Regardless of the music skills, regardless of notice right and wrong, and they praise God. Maybe people who are really educated with music and for music and they are really bothered, but sometimes they are not bothered. So sometimes uh, after that and then I try to it's really bothered but just a close eye and just think about the, the, the lyrics and with the lyrics and then I try to keep my heart getting better. When she's getting there. And then sometimes it's just more than this place and then just think about and drumming is really hurt my ear and then well sometimes you know bass is really burdened my heart. You know, I wanna just wish God for bass beat hit my heart. I don't like it. It seems like I'm I'm manipulated by the bass beat. I don't like it. My heart is kind of beating. I don't like it. Just think about it and then loud in play and try to, I don't know what is the point. But anyway, but different generation and different people and then you, you consider the young people and the, Jumping and dancing with the beat and loud music. Age is kind of a cultural trend, right? It's a different. So nowadays, whenever you go to church and 
mostly contemporary uh, style they are taking and they don't use so much hymns, maybe only generations and they do, but uh, they don't do it. So I went to the Vietnamese church and then um, Indonesian church, yeah, in here, in the Indonesian church is like, it's a, yeah, like my uh, the Korean church style, kind of traditional, and I went to Vietnamese church and then it's a unique, really unique. And then uh, the praise leaders is there and then they leading the praise. It's not a Presbyterian church and then they are uh, CNMA, yeah, uh, Christian missions and alliance and and the denomination yeah they have i think they have own freedom and then there is a second generation and first generation and get up together and worship together right and praise team is there in the second generation mostly uh, second generation is there for leading the song and they were third generation is there and they sing a song, or so, uh, they sing English and then they sing yeah, Vietnamese. But nobody complained. They, I think so they prepare, you know, prepare very well and they lead the song smoothly. Of course, the leader, or your worship leader, so he knows the Vietnamese and then he sings something in Vietnamese, but when they uh, sing a song in Vietnamese and then what? Wow, the first gener generation of singers can voice louder and lead the songs. Right? There's a difference. And uh, even though uh, denomination and if you go to Africa and then they have a really different style of worship there. Right? And you cannot understand. Worship is almost 30 hours, and then opening is 30, 30 minutes. Can you believe it? Opening is 30 minutes. And then when they worship, and they are really musical persons, and then and when they I was still I I'm still remember the, how they you know, give the offering and then it's a culturally really different. And then and Everybody and from the all the way back and some people kind of they show the offerings and handkerchief and dancing and dancing and as a shaking the rest of the handkerchief and then yeah keep dancing and singing and moving and coming out and they do offering. So look at this, you have ten dollar bring in. So I wanna offer just one dollar, but you can see the offering basket is an there's no changes. And still dancing and dancing and singing until, yeah, you know, Chinese, yeah, you know, the money is there so you can get the changes. And you can you see that? We can, yeah, I never seen that one. But nobody's, yeah, no problem for the, yeah, everybody. That's a part of their culture. Part of their culture, right? And sometimes they use the different musical genres, right? And mostly nowadays, and they use a band. But right before the band, then big church used the rock orchestra. And church members play, yeah, student, but the kids play the instrument, and church members play, all, yeah. And there's sometimes higher demands there in chorus too. How do you call yeah, kind of singers there and then they lead to sing and songs. And so a lot of yeah, a lot of still churches have their chorus and they using the chorus, but a lot of another church nowadays and then there's no chorus. And sometimes I went to the Malaysia and then it's a big church and there is no quiet choir like uh, all wearing the gown together, same gown together and uh, line up and singing. But there is no, there's, there's no kind of a choir, but uh, I can see that a uh, praise team is coming out and choir is yeah, yeah, the next to the praise behind and 
group of people is there, like a high schooler, junior high schooler, and um, young adult, and uh, like adult, and sometimes old people is there. So maybe four generation, three generation get together and they sing together. They don't harmonize. There's a, a place to be here, place to lead in the song, and the book stand you know, yeah, next to them and the group of people and they play together. That's a, yeah, it's a really nice when I see them. And that is a part of worship. And when I see, when I went to another church in New York, New York, and then, uh, what is it, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Redeemer Church. Uh, maybe a few weeks ago and the pastor, Kim Calder, passed away and he planned the church and young people are about, they are coming to, uh, to the church and then I was really surprised. The worship style is very traditional and like our uh, worship is like a thing. Uh, one day, there's a, why is a, there is kind of a, why is a, maybe 30 to 30 pages, and one day, so there was, was a, a long supper, and, and, and taking bread and cups, and then they followed the, the movie. So I was first time, I didn't know what to do, and they keep reading together, and they keep praying together, and it's really uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable, right? And then, but still, people are using and their own and their and they follow the, the all things except the preaching. They read together, hopefully worship. But it was really interesting. Was the uh, what it was interesting is that 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 day. I went to the five o'clock service and then five o'clock service and that day so all music are jazz styles, plain jazz styles. Interesting. Never I don't know. And a little bit awkward to me because it's the first time, but music itself I like it. And but young people, a little bit not many older people and it's really people get together, a lot of people get together, and they have worship together. And that is all. Uh, depends on the ethnic, ethnicity, depends on the uh, what's age group, depends on the, any kind of event, and depends on the age group, and depends on cultural trend, and worship style is really different. Right, very different. When you go to Africa, when you go to Philippines, when you go to Korea, and think about it, how they different. But it's not wrong. It's not wrong. If they had what? Glorifying God in the presence of God with the voices and heart, then it's not wrong. But when they have, they don't know, they don't have a heart, it's wrong, it's wrong, right? There's a difference. And so, I don't know uh, whether, I mean, I keep trying to find the wise archetype of a Christian worship. Uh, when I see the, the Old Testament and the days of sacrifice there, and when they get together and sharing the food and they are dancing and music and uh, there's a rich a certain days they celebrate and they walk. There's a worship there. And then sometimes they have a temple worship and when was a the was a, the temple is yeah uh, the temple meeting and temple is yeah the uh, uh, field and people coming out and giving you know, yeah, Learn the, the word of God and give them their offerings and right worshiping. And there is a when you see the uh, prayer and the Solomon prayed to God in the temple. 
And Israel people pray to God, right? That's part of worship and song. And then I don't know how they practice all things when they worship God, right? Well, I said the orders. There's a recently I really interesting about worship and then why the original archetype, you know, archetype of worship and then how they worship God and how is the change become now? But I want to say kind of evaluate all things and then I want we really, we really need to go back to God and then my my idea is that if I go to Messianic to church, maybe we can see how they are different from ours, but still worshiping God. Right? I think that they are still accepting practicing their worship based on the Old Testament. And I look around the churches of me, yeah, and then they have well, my wife was there and then she said that there's no even instrument, but uh, they read a lot of God's word and there's a dancing is there and then but still uh, she said that it's really different from the Christian yeah, the ones of uh, Protestant Christians worship and then even though we don't have like um, excellent music and they don't have excellent music and then they can she can feel the God's presence and they kind of she can see that how they worship God, glorify God. So, I'm trying to see, we, can, we cannot say, or always we try to adopt the cultural trend and try to be relevant to the culture. So, uh, try to kind of invite the people and let them know that this is Christ. That's good, that's good. So nowadays when you listen to the songs and a lot of the songs, so yeah, that's a, they said their intention and usually they don't have God and they don't have Jesus Christ. They say you, you. I mean that they are, it, it, they said it's a strategy to uh, reach out to people, maybe for the evangelism, but what about the worship? What about we worship? That's the uh, another part that we need to think about it, right? And I want to talk about the uh, current issues in Christian worships and then uh, wrap up this class. And we already talked about the basic elements, so uh, elements that the church are using. Right? Uh, we're gonna go over one by one, but yeah, later. And then music and songs and uh, sacrament and then like a Lord's first and then yeah, word reading the word and prayers and offerings and right, giving thanks to God and hymns, all kind of things, right? But Currently, regardless of the dog, I don't, I don't mind about uh, the styles, but I want to see that there is a heart for worship. There is a heart for worship. When praise is coming out, when preacher is coming out, it's really they are just praising to God, or they are kind of uh, concerted there. And they are but just to use the psychology or the past word. And it's a, it's a, it's a, they are proclaiming God's word or they can't be a wow. And or just God's word to their life. Sometimes it can be a, and it's upside down. Nowadays, and we are talking about the uh, wow, prosperity gospel, and around here in the big churches there, and then but they close, and then and there is one of the big church that living with the prosperity gospel. What's the prosperity gospel? 
emphasize the positive feelings of blessing, good blessing, and success. And nowadays, what well, peace, good relationship like this. Sometimes there is no, they read the Bible, that's it. But there is no any God, word of God, and word of Jesus. I was really surprised. But people buy someone's book and read and all, oh, it's really nice. But what is the essence of the gospel? They are really teaching the word of God. And the word of God is kind of a uh, move inside them. Right? That's a worship. It's not a voice, it's not comforting you know, people's emotion, kind of using the psychological uh, approach. Who can change people's heart? Who can make rich? Who can make poor? We believe in God. That's sovereignty. We believe honestly and then and without cheating others and do the bad things to make your wealth and then what? That's not God's way. But when you say go to church, a lot of people did really bad, hurt others and manipulate others to get their wealth, right? And they give them as a tithe and offering and then donation and people really admire them. But well, people who know the, the God, the people, right, the kind of people, and then, oh, he's not a Christian. If he's a Christian, I'm not going to go to church. There's no law that he is yeah, learning, he is saying about from the God. Right? He's a hypocrite like this. And that's a defaming God. And so one of the problems is the church is really proclaiming the prospect of gospels. And how can we bless? Why is the blessings stand out of a blessing? Why is the definition of blessing? There's a lot of people who say that a blessing means that you have a good family, you have you know finance, you have a nice house. You have a house, and your kids are going to good college and you get a good job after that. That's a blessing. I know that's a blessing. What about people who really don't have much money but try to live with the customer? But they are struggling. They are not rich. They are kind of ordinary people. But try to help others, not selfish. Should try to show the, the hospitality to others because of God. You think that they are not blessed by God? Who people have very selfish and ambitious and then kind of holding others you know, to get their own things and then well, well, accumulate their own wealth and then he's a lot of donation to church and then he's blessed. <coughs> yeah, we gotta know that though. Don't use the God's word uh, kind of yeah, controls people's mind. Yeah, I think it's a prosperity gospel we use that one. And that's a word. Yeah, instead of teaching, preaching, and uh, the proclaiming the word of God, and then they use uh, the psychology to comfort and to rationalize their uh, own needs and their wealth. What about uh, nowadays we are talking about consumerism? And when you buy the product and then some things that happen and you, you can return it. Oh, that is a really good service. And that's why they have good credit and then whenever it's a problem is there and then they can return it. 
like a, a department store in Nostro. And there was a really uh, high quality product was there. And then whenever something's happened, they don't ask why and they just uh, they take the return. Nowadays, people are really abused, like a Costco. You can return the yeah, product, and then sometimes I see the people who are returning the plan and almost dying, and there is no flower. Flowers dry, but they are returning. So Costco take it. I don't know how long they keep it. And nowadays, in the, yeah, nowadays in when you go to Nordstrom and that, oh, this is, but this product is not returnable. Like the parties and related to party dress and something like that. And then parties one day and then they finish and they, they wear it and they return it. They abuse the system. And like, and that's all. And when churches try to provide a lot of programs and See the rise of people's need. Consumer independent congregation just to try to pick what they want and they don't like it, they don't get involved. They turn back. Oh, why? That's why they want to attract a lot of people, consumers who come to church and donate money and the what? And run the church. That's why they provide the good programs, they try to see the people's need instead of people's spiritual need. And sometimes professional like musicians, hire professional musicians and let them lead the world. And nowadays, I don't know. And what I'm really bothered by music, and then it's like uh, hero stars kind of a, a sound system, which really bothers me. And there's echoing, and I already told you when they play and too loud, and my heart is beating with the wow. Bass is too loud. It's not for themselves. It's a lot of, but people like it. And try to get along with the people's favor and then, what? Well, customize to the what people's need. That's the customerism. That's one of the issues that at church. Pick a Bible you have. They kind of, yeah, uh, uh, philosophy is going on and, uh, Mind is going on and what happened? That worship. That's why we said uh, now it's really secularized a lot. And what about politics? How we get involved in politics? Whether Republican and Democratic and sometimes a lot of people think that that's why. In the, when you see the, the Old Testament period, and there is some government and what religious is one, when people come back, they are back from God and then they are separated. And politically, really, during the war, during the yeah, uh, old season and the war, a lot of yeah, yeah, uh, church leaders coming out and kind of, yeah, they do something, right? Support someone, now support like this. That's a personal stuff. And, oh, we gotta vote this one and this one, this one. And event oriented media is like a consumerism too. And, just think about what people like and a lot of like events they keep going and going and going. And just think about when you put your event then they do and then have the event and what is left. People are leaving left and then what about what is left? 
some kind of tiredness burning out. I don't know how much is really affect to the church's attraction and like how to the grow the people's in this people's spiritualities and I don't know. So I'm not the guy that do I uh, uh, what is the hard always even though we don't have a big event and even though we don't have a kind of revival conference, it's sometimes really kind of I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. Depends on the church and then uh, yeah, when I was in Korea and then a lot of church once a year and then they were revival conference at church and um, there is a speaker coming out sometimes. They speak very bad. Sometimes bad words and sometimes they seem like they are so like kind of a lord. I don't know where God is. Yeah. What about congregation, population getting to increase and decrease, right? What happened? And just think about particularly when I get a big church. And so a lot of pastors dreaming about having the mega church. They want their church is kind of a big and known to others and people are coming to their church. But nowadays the congregations, populations is decreasing. And how can we watch it? That's why they try to make up and then they follow the, the cultural trend a lot. And that's why people really open the door and people are waiting. Maybe that's an excuse as well to be relevant to a lot people. But I don't know the way this is spirituality, core of worship. And other thing is that there is some moral issues, church leaders' moral issues and Christians and they come to church and look faithful, but there's more issues. Scandal with money and sex and power. Seems like there is no difference from the, the secular world. And that's a part of your issues, and then still people are getting together and worshiping God. And we cannot, these are moral issues, and then all you know, political, related political, and then we cannot, uh, it's a, apart from the issues. Our worship is not apart from these issues. Think about how this one is kind of reflect on worship. Cultural trend, right? And philosophies. And just think about how it affects the church worship. And I don't know. I went to church and then one day, uh, I think that there are uh, sometimes I, they decorate them as a stage and what is for? Sometimes the fog is coming out, and then what is fall? It's so when the stage is kind of decorated with the light or something, and then and fog is coming out, and then as a, we have a gospel, yeah, gospel moving more in people's heart. So we gotta we gotta know that what is the uh, what is the, the the spirit is moving, or it's how psychology is moving by the atmosphere. Right? So, yeah, there's yeah, issues and maybe and more, but 
I just uh, uh, changed my lectures. I plan to kind of uh, uh, finish the uh, what is the brief history of the worship, but uh, instead of that one, I think the time is not enough, and then I change it. So, okay, let's talk about cultural issues in Christian worship one and uh, the, the Christian churches. It's really related. So, and uh, maybe some of you guys not agree with me, and sometimes maybe you agree with me, and then, but literally there is a difference there. But think about, let's think about before we jump into other stuff, and then what is a, what is a worship? Define the worship. Right? And if we have a worship, and what is this one? What is the issue that now going on and people are talking about? Right? Alright, so I hope that uh, it's a little bit give you an idea about worship and have some issues and then uh, thinking of uh, think about the, uh, the what is coming and maybe I hope that you guys attending yeah, if you are attending the church and then hope that kind of uh, looking into each yeah, things in a little bit critical mind to fix our worship right all right so I hope that uh, this will this class is a little bit uh, helps you understanding about worship and then how we are looking forward and then how can we fix our worship right so you know, I hope that you help kind of uh, you guys with it yeah in this yeah, yeah while you are taking this class and yeah today is kind of an introductory class and then uh, I hope that you guys are doing well and take a little bit of really uh, good to have you guys in this class and let's uh, uh, work together for the class so yeah if you have any class about uh, your struggling and church issues and your spiritual issues and anything and just maybe you can if you want to talk to me and i will willing to listen right and god bless you and take care of yourself so that is not good nowadays